Hey everyone, I'm back and it feels like it has been so long. I actually don't know how long it's been since my last like normal draw with me, but basically finals happened. I got stressed out. Um, I started focusing on my shop more and I kind of honestly forgot about YouTube a little bit. And once I did like remember, wait, I haven't made a video in so long. It was holiday season and I just, I just really wanted to relax. You know, I always say like it's important to take breaks. And so I took a break during the holidays and I've really been enjoying it. Technically it's still the holidays, but I really wanted to sit down and just do this, you know, just so that I could put out a video um, and try to get consistent again. And I actually wanted to do this way earlier and like probably post it around New Year's, like like the first few days of 2023, but then I got sick. Um, I got like a strep throat or sore throat or something. It wasn't COVID though. And I'd lost my voice and you can kind of still hear some of like the recovery going on here, but um, you don't have to worry about me. My throat doesn't feel sore anymore. It's completely fine. I just still have some slight congestion that you might be able to hear in my voice, but I'm good enough enough to talk like maybe for 40 minutes for this video because it is a longer one. So enough of all that I've rambled on, enough about where I've been. Um, I'm just going to get into it and start talking about this piece. So this piece is a commission and it was commissioned by the lovely, lovely artist Mazamuno, and I've looked up to Maza for so long. Their art is like absolutely amazing. It's like anime style, but it's like edgy and it's pink. It's basically like pink gothic art and it's just like, it's so cool. It reminds me of, um, you know, there's like old like 2000s uh early internet profile pictures of like the depressed anime girl with um black and white striped shirt and she had like bangs and she had like black hair basically like those it reminds me of those um their art style and so when they commissioned me i was like oh my gosh absolutely i will do this i was so excited and i feel like my performance on this commission was partly because of like my admiration for them, but also because this character, it, it's not exactly like the type of character that I like to draw, but there are certain cases where the character just completely vibes with you. And this was one of them. There are times where you think a character might vibe with you from your first moment seeing them and you're accept the commission or I accept the commission and then I get to it and I'm just like wait like for some reason I'm not liking this and it doesn't like turn out well but this was um a really really cool character to draw so I think this character's name is Noen um I confused it with like neon before but I think it's Noen and they have they them pronouns they are non-binary and they aren't the most colorful character but this comes with its own perks even though i do like to work with very colorful characters the character has like monotonous colors like this which is usually like like creams and grays and blonde hair or pale skin all that it's kind of like it's pretty monotonous and you can do a lot with a background because of this um i've actually learned some of this stuff from my 2d class in my first semester where because this character is has monotonous colors or um yeah because this character has monotonous colors i could put like a ton of color in the background and create like a contrast in saturation and create a contrast like so character is in the foreground with uh monotonous you know what a monochrome colors i feel like i'm saying monotonous too much and the background has usually like three or two colors that are either complementary to the character or complementary to each other and um, 
because the entire piece is highly saturated, it doesn't distract from the characters. It actually kind of puts more focus on the character because you're like, hey, look at this thing that isn't blue. You know, like the, this thing in front that isn't completely blue or yellow or, or pink. And I really enjoyed it. And it, and it was one of those things where I didn't exactly have a vision in my mind for how I wanted it to look. And I kind of just went for it. I took a selfie doing the pose. You guys will never see that selfie. That selfie will never see the light of day because they are so cringy every time I take a photo. They are so helpful. I basically did this pose uh, with my hand and I did the smile. I was like, this is, this seems perfect for this character. And I went for it and the first sketch turned out really great. The lines, I absolutely love the lines. There's some times where I'm lining then I decide, you know what? I'm tired of this. I don't like how it looks and I don't want to line. And so I don't line. Um, I did that my last video with my podcast video. I was drawing my OC Isabella and I ended up really, really liking the sketch. Moved on to um, lining. And once I started doing that, I just kept looking back and comparing to the sketch. And I was like, I just like the sketch better. And I don't feel like lining right now. And so I, I just colored the sketch, but this was not, not one of those instances. I think, I think at this time I was very loose with, um, I don't know, like maybe I was like warmed up or something, but I was feeling very, um, I don't know. What's another word for loose, but, um, I'm just using the word loose because my drawing professor would say that for very, basically very like messy looking, uh, art and tight is for like really just like intricately detailed it looks like this person spent a lot of time grueling over the small strokes and stuff but loose is just like let me just go for it it doesn't mean that there's less effort put into it but it's just like you just commit to these very long strokes and quick uh drawing and that is how i treated this line art and i absolutely loved it and i think before in other videos, I had expressed um, kind of being insecure at having some imposter syndrome because people would call my drawings doodles or like sketches. And I think I'm coming to terms with it now. I'm in, and I'm in the acceptance phase where I'm just like, you know what? Who cares? Like, I love this charm that I found within my art where it's very loose and it's very sketchy sometimes. It doesn't have to be completely neat and I'm completely fine with that now. And this uh, this line art is like one of the perfect examples of that. And I actually did some things in this uh, piece that I don't normally do. I put a bit of uh, lines for the under eyelid or eye bag, whatever you want to call it, because I just felt like it matched the character. Maybe I was influenced by um, Maza's style a bit because I was like just staring at the reference the entire time because I, I didn't want to get anything wrong about the character. Um, maybe I did get a few things wrong here and then. I feel like I added too many eyelashes for a non-binary character because I felt like I just made them look too feminine and instead of um, androgynous. Androgynous is the word I'm looking for. So I felt like the eyelashes just made them look a bit too girly, but whatever, you know, um, non-binary people can be girly too. This mouth, also, when, when I first drew that mouth, I was like, ooh, like I don't normally draw like, expressions like this. And it's not in my comfort zone currently to draw very expressive mouths, like very large mouths. 
um, and I just went for it. And I also struggle a lot with drawing teeth and fangs, but this just turned like I just like went for it, and it turned out really nice. And I was like, wow, I did that. Lauren did that. Uh, it looks pretty good. The mouth doesn't look weird at all, in my opinion. Hopefully, it doesn't look weird to anyone else. But yeah, the it's it's pretty rare to be able to say that lining might have been my favorite part of this piece, which is like it never happens. I usually hate lining. I usually um, like lining is usually my least favorite part of the process and then I like uh, overpainting the best and uh, sketching second. Sometimes, depends on the piece, I like uh, sketches first. So here I'm sketching, no, here I'm lining the mouth and I was like, whoa, this is just going so much in my favor. Because sometimes um, I did use a very thick brush for sketching and sometimes that doesn't translate well, like the shapes don't translate well once I start to line because the lines are like a lot thinner. But with the mouth, uh, I was worried that the thick lines wouldn't translate well with like the shape and stuff. I even tried to add gums, but I was like, you know what? It looks, it looks fine without the gums. It's fine like that. It's perfect how it is. And I'm just going to trust the colors to do, um, to do the mouth justice. And I, I think they did. This is around the time where I uh, I run out of things to say, at least with this, because I have some some stuff to say about the colors, but uh, I want to save it for when we do get there. And so on Instagram, I posted a story and I asked, um, what are some topics that I could touch up on when I don't know what to say? And Ariel Illustrates on Instagram asks, what are my thoughts and tips on imposter syndrome? So if you don't know what imposter syndrome is, it is when you as a creator, as an artist, as a creative person, you feel like an imposter. Like, whoa, hold on. Why was I doing that with my hand? <laughs> okay, I don't know why I was doing that with my hand in the video. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, imposter syndrome is when a creative person feels like they're being an imposter as in like they are not good enough for what they usually consider themselves to be so like maybe I'm not a good enough artist maybe I'm not a good enough singer maybe I'm not a good enough dancer like whatever it is you do and you feel like you're an imposter you feel like you're faking it um, and it's in summary Basically, you just feel like you're not good enough. And this happens to creative people all the time because sometimes, well, inevitably, actually, it's almost like guaranteed that one day you're going to find yourself in a creative slump or an art block or a writing block, whatever it's called for whatever you do. And you just can't seem to create the content or uh, whatever creative thing it is that you're making to the best of your ability and you're not you're not satisfied with anything you do and you feel like if you put it out there people also think the same that the, the work that you do isn't good and that you feel like an imposter and my thoughts on that is that it's completely normal to feel that way the same way that it's completely normal to have an art block it's completely normal to have imposter syndrome 
In the past, I feel like when I've answered this question before, I said something along the lines of, I look at um, my artwork that I'm most proud of to remind myself like what I'm capable of. And I think that's still pretty uh, valid to this day. That's still how I feel. That's still probably what I would do. I also suggest taking a break and just like maybe not drawing, but gaining some confidence in your observation skills or what is it called? Like you're training your eye, training your artist's eye because just because you're unable to draw something doesn't make you uh, not a creative person. It doesn't make you any less than someone who can because um, I'd actually watched, I haven't watched the movie, but uh, there's this movie, Amadeus, about uh, Mozart and uh, what's his name, Salieri, I think. I'm sorry if I'm not saying this right. I'm not very knowledgeable about it. Like I literally have only run into like three minute clips of them, but I, I read the comments to see what people have to say because I don't want to watch the movie myself, even though I probably should. I'm not awfully interested in Mozart, but I was really interested in the, the character who is supposed to be his rival. And someone in the comments had said that his rival had this ear for music and this like mind that was amazing. And he could just understand Mozart's music in a way that others couldn't. He could literally hear the music in his mind just from looking at the notes. And, you know, he could, he could hear like the entire composition just by seeing, at least that's how it was portrayed in the movie. And I was thinking like, that doesn't make him any less great than Mozart. Yeah, Mozart was a genius, but this guy, maybe he wasn't able to create these things himself, but it's still incredibly impressive that his mind is capable of such things. And I feel like applying that to artists Training your eye and being able to kind of see the potential and stuff, seeing how it could be better, seeing how things can be improved within your own art and asking yourself, you know, like, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel like an imposter? And what can I do about my art to, like, get rid of this feeling? Like, uh, there's these charts sometimes that have popped up where it's like as your drawing skill uh, fluctuates up and down your eye as an artist and your ability to see and what your standards are also fluctuates and in times where you don't feel like you're good enough it is because your standards are higher than your skill and in moments where you feel really good it's because your standards are i don't want to say lower because i feel like that invalidates like your standards but it just means that your your standards are lower than your current skill level and once your standards exceed your skill level that's when you feel like okay i'm i'm not good again and it's like this cycle it's important to understand as a creative person that these these things are like just how it is it's it's the process of life it's you never ever no one's ever going to feel 100% like good about themselves all the time and an artist isn't going to love their work all the time there're going to be some that they hate there's going to be some that they love and is their favorite eventually even that favorite their standards are going to exceed it and they're going to go back and probably see something that they might want to change about it. And um, I feel like I just went off on a tangent, didn't really answer the question, but um, basically my thoughts on imposter syndrome, it's a completely normal thing. Don't feel like you're wrong for feeling that way because so many other people feel that way. And um, sorry if I didn't really answer like how to get rid of it because to be honest, I don't really have like a straight answer for that. Everyone works different. It's just important to know that you will get through it. Like, don't let it affect you too much, you know? Like, like you can still get back up from it. It's just um, knowing yourself and how you 
you can get through situations like that. Okay, so we've finally reached the coloring segment of the video and if I sound different it's because I'm recording this on a different day. So yeah, coloring, as for colors for this piece, even before I started sketching, just by looking at the references, I knew that I wanted to blue into it because the uh, character's hair is blonde and, you know, complementary colors, yellow and blue just look really nice. and kind of reminiscent of my portrait of Jules, my character, uh, where it's a blonde character and a neon blue background. So I wanted to go for that vibe because, you know, then it, it'll have continuity with one of my other pieces and yada yada yada. And I also wanted to put pink in it because Mazamuno's trademark color is pink. And I was like, I gotta get some of that in there. And then it just kind of started coming together with the yellow, the pink, and blue, and it's very like primary color esque. And lately, I've been trying to transition my art into this like thing where my colors are recognizable, and I'm choosing the color scheme of primary colors. I I want primary colors like toy core, kid core stuff to be what um, my art is known by and recognized by. One of, uh, if one of my followers sees primary colors next together, I want them to think of me. Like, that is my goal. And so far, it's been going good. And what's great about primary colors is that you can do a lot with kind of mixing and matching the colors and switching them to other shades. So, obviously, primary colors is red, yellow, blue. And in this case, I have made the yellow extremely neon. And I've changed the red to a bit more of a pinkish, pinkish, hot pink uh, shade. And, uh, you know, you can change, there's a lot you can do with the blue shade. There's a lot you can do. You could change the, the yellow to a more orangey, something like that. Or you can change the red to be more orangey. You can change the blue to be more turquoise. Like, it is really, uh, what is the word? Versatile. Primary color color schemes are very, very versatile. Now, as for what I'm doing right now, I'm laying down the underpainting is what I like to call it, but really it's just um, shading on the flat colors. And it's not like too much shading, it's very rough shading. Someone once asked me to explain what an underpainting and overpainting is, as I did uh, an overpainting reel on Instagram. And underpainting, similar to real life painting is just laying down where you want the shadows to be or you want the highlights to be and it's supposed to assist you once you actually start to clean the piece up and you start to make everything all neat and stuff and the way i do this is just i, I lay down the flat colors i add some shadows blushes wherever i want them to be like roughly and I kind of just use them as guidelines on my overpainting. And I'm gonna try to go in depth more with the overpainting because um, people were requesting it on Instagram. And I would save this for like my tutorial or process video, but, but whatever, I'll just talk about it right now for, for the people who are here. So I also tend to color the line art sometimes. Sometimes I forget and I just keep them black and either way it doesn't really matter because when I overpaint I do uh, paint over or like draw over my existing lines a lot to, to change color that way. So in the end at the end of the day it doesn't really matter if I change the color of the line work or not. Uh, before it used to really matter a lot back when I wasn't overpainting because that was like 
the line art was exactly what sat on top. Like the line art was the overpainting. Whatever I did to the line art is what happened to it, like in the final uh, product, which I feel like it it feels incomplete if I don't overpaint. And so now I've now I've actually started overpainting the eyebrows, and here I'm just you know adding more depth to it, um, darkening the eyebrows so that they're more noticeable, and I'm changing the colors of the line work around the eyes. So one of the first things I like to do once I start to work on the eyes is changing the color of the like little shadow for the eyelid or the line for the eyelid to something matching the skin tone more so that it's not just like a harsh black line there and uh one thing i actually learned in high school about shading the face is you want the darkest parts of the face to only be the eyes and like the nostrils and so i've taken that to heart and i've taken it with me and i've remembered it for the rest of my art career and i like to ensure that the eyelashes if not the like eyeballs themselves are the darkest part of the face because you know this character has very light blue eyes so obviously their eyes aren't going to be the darkest it's going to be, be their eyelashes or the pupil later on and what i've taken to doing after looking at some other artists art is actually not making it completely completely black i've um tended to want to blend the eyelashes into the skin and i have like added some light in there not light i guess like just a a lighter version of a dark color and i like to outline it with um that like eyelid line color if that makes sense. It, I just think it like it accentuates the eyelashes a lot more. It makes you want to look at the eyes because you're just like, whoa, what's going on there? And um, uh, it's it's become a bit of a, like a trademark of mine, I guess. Like some people might recognize my art because it like has that in there. And I know some people have tried it themselves because they've seen me do it and it, it's come out really great. And I'm like happy for them. You know, it's just small things like that that you see other artists do that sometimes you just got to try it out for yourself and see how it looks on your art and see what else you can do with it, you know? Because because experimentation is really key to finding the little quirks about your art that you really, really like to do. This um, trick for the highlights on the eyes, I got it from Instagram artist Blue Satan because this is what they would do in their Procreate illustrations where the, the highlight on the eyes has a, a darker outline and it makes it pop out more. Um, I just love that. And so I basically stole it and I applied it to my own art and eventually as time went on, uh, it became less of a copy and more of like a thing that I changed around to to be what I wanted it personally instead of what they were doing and that's just honestly like use your resources and save some of the things that you see other artists do I have a discord server where it's just me myself and that's where I like to put like my bookmarks instead of uh, utilizing the, my browser's bookmark thing. So what I do, like if I see a, a nice painting that I think will inspire me later on or it has some type of like method that I want to try in the future, um, I will put it in one of my Discord channels and then I'll type in a keyword with it, whether it's like hands, fabric, uh, face, eyes, something like that because discord you could just search a keyword and it'll pop up for you and so you know if, if uh, i want to try something new with my hands i could just look up hands in that discord server and it'll show all the links that i put in that i wanted to uh, look at whenever i felt like drawing hands yeah that's really handy and you know i encourage you guys to go and make something like that for yourself and 
seeing and learning from other artists' work is something that is going to be really useful for your entire art journey. You know, like these are people who you probably look up to and you love their art. And being able to identify what makes their art different from others and like it'll really help you figure out what you can do to your own art to, you know, just make it yours and you know, like don't be a lone wolf. Don't be stubborn and be like, no, I'm going to do everything by myself because there is really a lot to learn from other people. Okay, so here I am overpainting the mouth and I'm really proud of the way I did this mouth actually because it's just, I mean, just look at it. Um, I haven't touched the teeth yet, but there's not too much to touch with the teeth. As you can see, like, because the lips and uh, like everything is done already, the teeth look a little weird because it's just black and white. And so the thing to do here is to add some color in there. like. A little bit of a gray that has some color uh, some purple or whatever and just kind of cover up some of that black so that it's not too harsh and that's what I like to do when I do my overpainting and uh, I can't go too into detail over exactly what it is that I do and why I do it because it's something that just comes naturally these days and uh, once you try it out for yourself, you you'll start to know like the things that you like to do. Like maybe you wouldn't have done this if you know you were me. Maybe you would have just kept it as pure black and white, and you didn't add any sort of like purple in there. And that'll that would have been cool. That would have been your thing, you know. And maybe you you couldn't have an explanation as to why you did it that way either. And yeah. So moving on to hair. The hair, uh, these days I actually feel like I tend to neglect the hair a lot more when it comes to detail because I just think it looks really nice sometimes when it's flat looking. I like to add like this lighter shade to separate the eyelashes from the hair just to make sure that the eyelashes don't blend into it too much. And with hair, what I basically do is get rid of some of those black lines by choosing, like color picking the base hair color or a shadow hair color and just going over the lines with that. And I think it adds this great sketchy feeling with it. So with the neck, uh, sometimes I forget to do this, actually. Um, I'm still conflicted on exactly what I like to do, but I guess it depends on the piece where um, the shadow of the neck, like the shadow that the, the chin makes on the neck, uh, most of the time you'll probably see it being black uh, in my drawings with like this tint of pink or red uh, around it. It's like this halation effect that happens when something is lit up by a very harsh direct light source and for some reason one day I decided to just apply that to this very harsh shadow under the chin. Even though like probably doesn't make sense that it's that dark, sometimes I change it to just being the uh, typical shade of the, the shadows on the skin instead of black, but I tend to do black a lot more often these days and I just can't I can't pinpoint why I like it maybe I like the contrast that it does or that it adds to the piece and um, before I used to actually be really scared of like keeping black in my pieces because I think I read somewhere that it was like a tip that other artists had said where it's like 
you never want to put like uh, complete black in your pieces and you never want to put complete white. And I feel like uh, I took it the wrong way to meaning never use black and never use white. And um, nowadays I'm just really embracing my use of black. And I, sometimes I still leave in like these bits and pieces of the black line art because I, I think it adds a charm to the piece where it's just like, you know, not too neat and stuff. Sometimes I think when things are too neat, they lose a bit of the, the personality that they had back when they were sketches. And that's one of those like reasons why sometimes work in progress pictures get like a lot more attention on social media than the finished pieces because it had a lot more personality and charm when it was a sketch versus uh, when it was a, a finished clean piece because it lost some of it, you know? And that's just, to avoid that, I guess it's once again, just training your eye to be able to more uh, wisely decide which things to keep and which things to get rid of once you start cleaning up your work. And like right here, I'm uh, mostly inside of the uh, outline of the, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like within the hair, I get rid of all the black lines except for the little headband that they have because I wanted the headband to stand out. And, but I still kept the like perimeter of the hair, like the outline um, black. And it's just one of those things where it's like you want the character's silhouette to stay intact and you don't want to smudge it too much so uh keep it black or thicken it up a bit and uh i started doing this like last year too uh, which is like making some of the hair uh shadow just black like in the background and i started doing this to jewels because i i really like the addition of black into her hair uh, scheme color scheme and it's not exactly that her hair is black it's just you know like a dramatic shadow effect or whatever so i'm doing the hands and i'm really 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 proud of these hands that i did and part of the reason why they look uh good in my opinion is because I really stuck to a reference this time um, if you remember me mentioning me taking a selfie at the beginning of the video for this pose uh, I just referred back to that selfie and I just stared at my hand for a few minutes and I drew up this thing and uh, I still have that picture actually and I would go to that picture to examine how the shadow fell on my hand and that isn't viable in every case because sometimes the, the shadow in your picture doesn't match the light source that you have in your your drawing. And this drawing doesn't exactly have like an exact light source. I guess it's like head on or whatever. But I wanted to get rid of the black lines within the fingers because I wanted the nails to pop out once again, just like the hair. And with fingernails actually, I used to be really scared to do them because I couldn't figure out a way to put nails on a finger without it looking weird. But uh, I started saving any like drawings of hands that had nails on them. I put I put them in my Discord server and I would just like, go and search hands or nails and I would be like, oh, like that's what they did to make it look less weird. Or I would actually look at my hand and be like, okay that's where that line would go and that's where that line would go and um one thing in school that helped me with this is actually studying uh van gogh's work there's this one contour drawing that you get to copy in every single segment of contour drawing in a, in a drawing class and it's the one where uh van gogh drew his friend i forgot his name uh no but uh, it's uh, this man sitting in a chair and, you know, he has like a tie and his hair is very fun to draw. 
and I think he has like circular glasses. Yeah, but so if you know who that is, I promise it for other people to see. But um, he has like gigantic hands in the picture, and the exercise in class is to draw it or copy it backwards. And professors usually say like you don't have to copy it like perfect, just. Uh, you know, just try to learn from doing a contour drawing. Don't look sometimes. And my favorite part to do in that was the hands because uh, when you're not looking at your paper and you start drawing fingers and you add in the fingernails and you're seeing how Van Gogh did it, and you try it out for yourself and then you look at what you did and you're like, wait, that looks nice. Like that doesn't look weird at all. And it's, it's a pretty fun thing to find out and you know you can apply to that to your own work so with this barbed wire thing on this character's neck i actually wanted to add some color to it because i felt like it just being black was kind of throwing things off and so i decided to just add those primary colors into it and i, I think it gave it a really cool effect and that's not exactly how it looked in the the reference that i was looking at for the character's outfit, but I I think it added something really cool to the piece. And uh, it, you know, I, I feel like the neck bit would have been really boring to look at if those colors weren't there. So I'm slowly but surely reaching the end of this video and I'm just working on this t-shirt, ripped up t-shirt and um, trying to make it look very torn up and I, I'm i not entirely satisfied in how it looks. Um, I feel like I could have done better with the tears, uh, just like ripped jeans, um, but you know, just sometimes you just gotta keep things messy because it just has their own thing. And just like the barbed wire, I added some color to the earrings also, and then I move on to the background because I realized that I kind of neglected the background because usually I would have these uh, trinkets or stickers or icons or whatever in the background already from the sketch. Usually I figure that out during the sketching phase, but this one, I just got too excited to just finish the character already because I was really vibing with like how it was looking and so uh, I forgot about the background until now but um, yeah there's nothing really much to it. I don't do line art per se for the background. Um, I really just keep it sketchy because it's not the, the it's not the focus of the piece. Um, it's there to look nice and it's not meant to be like, you know, draw your eyes in. And so I just keep it uh, sketchy with my crunchy pencil. And usually with these commissions, I like to ask the commissioner if there's anything specific that they want to be included in there. And Mazamuno said that for this character, their vibe is kind of like gothic, uh, internet core type thing with like possibly skulls and like Windows error thingy mouses um, and so I put a, a windows error thing I put a skull and bones and uh, some mail like Yahoo mail you know like some like, like email and I just I'm really happy with how this turned out I honestly wish I could turn it into a print and sell it but it is a commission uh, I don't you know like 
I, I don't think Mazumuno would want me selling this thing for my own like shop. But yeah, I'm really excited to do more of these types of portraits for my own characters so I can make them as prints and um, hopefully I could do that in the future and talk more about it. But yeah, it's nice being back. I'm hoping to be a bit more consistent uh, in 2023. Uh, I said before in a community post that I want to post at least once a week, but I don't know if that's, that might be a bit too much for me. At, probably at least, at least once every two weeks. Like if we're going to be very realistic here, I'm going to try to post at least four times a month or three times a month, but um, don't count on me. <laughs> okay, like, I, I do this in phases. I, I don't go by a schedule. Um, and I just, I'm just a human trying to enjoy my work. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed listening to this. Draw with me, and I hope you've drawn something really cool. And, you know, I, it's been 40 minutes. Time to take a break, probably. Stretch your hands, stretch your fingers so you, they don't hurt. But yeah, um, what do YouTubers say again? Like and subscribe if you haven't. I do have a Patreon and my shop it has reopened for 2023. So go check that out. There's links in the description. So if you want to know the brushes that I use, they're also down in the description. And the tablet that I use and equipment. There's a supplies list down there. So uh, don't, don't ask in the comments. Just check the description before you ask. And if there's something missing, then then ask and I'll probably answer it because yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed and yeah, see you later, which I don't know when that'll be. Hopefully it's not too long, but see you next time. Goodbye.